Welcome to part two of the video build log of the Dynam T28. In this part, we'll assemble the flaps and mount the wings to the fuselage. Now the next step in the assembly is to put the uh, wing spar in and assemble the wings, but I'm going to be putting flaps on this T28 and so while the wings are still apart, I'm going to take the time to do that. Now the Dynam flap uh, assembly process is really pretty good and I explained it in some detail in part two of my uh, video build log for the Dynam SR22 uh, trainer or the SR trainer as Dynam calls it. But let me point out just a couple of things uh, as we put this uh, uh, together. First, the flaps are here, and because this has got paint on it, what uh, might be worthwhile is taking your hobby knife and just kind of running the blade along the seam. Don't cut this tab off. We're not going to do that, but we are going to run the blade along the, the seam just to separate any of the paint that might have uh, uh, gotten in there. Now, the, t the flaps are normally just attached with some uh, double stick tape, so they're usually pretty easy to, to pull apart. And this is worth taking a little bit of time and having a little bit of patience. You notice that the, the foam right here between the aileron and the flap is not very much. And so you just want to apply some pressure on the flaps, break that free, a little bit of pressure back and forth, and then you'll feel it start to come up. And as it comes up, you can just slowly, slowly bring it up and come out. And then along here, you're going to have some double stick tape or along here depending upon where the tape separates. In which case you just take your thumb and just kind of rub on the tape and be able to pull it off. Now you'll notice that I pulled this off before I demonstrated that to you. And so the separation process for this airplane only took about a minute or a minute and a half. But I'm not going to be real rough with the foam because after all it is foam and you don't want to deform it or run the risk of breaking it, especially this section right here. Now. The other thing that we're going to be doing is pulling out this little tab. Now it's real interesting uh, that Dynam, the way that Dynam does it, you see that there's a trough or a, a, a channel for the control rod and then the plug where the servo is going to go fits right there. So you can just take a screwdriver or your hobby knife, work your way under there and, and pull on it, pry it up, pry it up and pull it out and you can see this one was just stuck with just a little with just a little drop of glue and so it was just enough to hold it in there and now you have a nice uh, place for your nine gram servo to fit so that worked out uh, also very very well and so that's all we're going to do for the uh, the preparation now I see that in here that this is painted white and so I'm going to um, go off camera here for just a minute and uh, get some green paint to uh, kind of simulate that uh, chromium or zinc oxide uh, green color that you often find in the wheel wells of military airplanes and so that's what I'm going to be doing next and when that dries we'll come back and I'll show you how to mount the hinges and the servo. Okay, you can see that I have the green painted there uh, on the inside of the flaps to simulate that interior wheel well kind of paint that you often find. I use kind of a Kelly green color from a, a craft to style paint. So you probably have some of this laying around your workshop. So it should be pretty easy for you to do. Now, a couple of things before we put the hinges on, which is our next step. Uh, we need to get the servo mounted. So I'm using a little nine uh, gram servo and it's going to fit in here. I had to cut a little bit of the foam since every one of these servos seems to be just a little bit different shape. Before doing that, I put the uh, servo on again, my servo tester to center it and then put the servo arm on it. Now in this case there's a nice long channel that runs underneath this piece of foam and out through the wing root over here and so I've got a 12 inch uh, servo extension that I'm going to attach to the um, servo lead from the servo uh, making sure I have the wires matched, the colors matched. Yes, I do. Get that in there. You may want to tape that if you'd like. It's going to be under cover, so I'm not going to worry about it. And you can see that the servo goes through this really nice channel very easily. And I've already got it coming out over here. So I will give it a little tug to get the uh, connector through. Then I will Set those wires behind the little foam tabs that are molded in the foam. 
and so I'm good to go with that. I'm going to come back and put a little bit of hot glue around that to make sure that it all stays nice and tight. Okay? So, now to the flaps itself. I'm just going to cover the high points with you here. First you'll notice that in this there are, is a long leg and a short leg. And the long leg and tab is the side that's going to go into the wing. The short leg and tab is the side that goes into the flaps. The other way to tell is that the short leg tab has a little hole drilled in it. Now that's not going to be important to us right now uh, because we're only going to put in the inboard and the outboard hinge, but that is going to be where the uh, flap actuator connects on the center hinge. And so we want to make sure that uh, we have the tab with the hole in it in the flap itself. Now the other thing I did again getting ready for the actuator is I cut just a little bit of foam out um, along there so that that actuator rod is going to be able to fit through there smoothly. So, we'll get the flab, flap and put it in place. I'm going to be using the, the glue that came with the kit. Since this is EPO foam, you can use medium CA or polyurethane glue, uh, whatever you prefer. I've used this Dynam brand glue before and it works pretty well. And so, it's, since it's here, I'm going to use it. So I've got the glue on the tabs and on the flap portions. I've got the whole side with the little tab going into the flap itself. Put a little pressure on that and get it mounted. Next flap, same way. Put a couple of drops of glue. The plate and the tab on both sides. The short leg tab with the hole in the flap again. You don't want to mix up the flap throws. That's not going to work for you. And so that's why I'm making a point to call that out a couple of different times. Uh, so we've got that mounted in there. A little bit of pressure to make sure that it's seated. And then we're just going to let it set up. Okay, you can see that the hinges have dried now and the flaps move nice and smooth. So we're going to be putting the flap actuator and the tab uh, hinge in this uh, last hole. So we'll take the control rod, we'll put the Z-bend through the hole in the tab, and then what we're going to do is we're going to dry fit it in there. Because as you can, you might be able to see that, that there's a little bit of extra space where the Z-bend is down here, and then there's of course the wire sticking out there. And since the recess area was built just for the tab, you're going to have to take your hobby knife and just pull a little bit of foam out to give that some room. And then just a little bit of foam on the wing side as well as that wire starts working its way at a bit of an angle up the channel toward the servo. Now the other thing that I like to do is I have these, um, these plastic sleeves. This one came from an old model. You might have one around the shop. Uh, maybe it's holding the antenna vertical on an RC car, for example. Uh, but I like to take about uh, three quarters of an inch, cut it off, and then just slide it slide it onto the control rod and my goal there is to mount that in the slot about where this tab is because I'm going to cover this with glue and I don't want to glue the control rod to the foam. So I'm going to use that little sleeve to help prevent that from happening. So it looks like I'm in pretty good shape now. I did a dry fit. It's all ready to go. So I'll take again my contact cement, put a little glue on the tab and on the flat plate. Have it on both sides. I'm going to put it in the slot and watch where that little sleeve is so that it goes right where I want it as I push down and mount those carefully in. Now I'm going to put that rod through the quick connector there, or the easy connector, just so that the, the rod doesn't bow and provide a little upward pressure on the, um, on the hinge as it sets up. So we've got the hinge in there nice and tight, it fits in, the rod goes through the little sleeve. I can see the sleeve, I'm going to push it back just a little bit with the tip of my hobby knife. So it's under the tab. There we go, perfect fit. 
we've got that in there we're ready to go and so now it's just going to be a matter of waiting for the glue to set up well if you haven't been planning to put the flaps on your t28 the last couple of minutes have probably not been too interesting for you uh, but now we're ready with the wings complete and the flap hinges attached and all dry to attach the wings to the fuselage. So let's take a minute and show you how that happens. First, we're just going to be taking the one of the wings and the spar that comes with it and then pushing the spar into the hole in the wing. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to place the spar through the fuselage uh, in the channel that is provided for it. And we're just going to uh, get it in there until it comes through. Okay. Now at this point we're going to bring the wires through that um, and there's a channel here that they're all going to fit through. So uh, we've got them connected. Now I've used a, a china marker or an ink pen to mark the tab so I know what's what. And so I've got the landing gear here. This is the landing gear um, part of the Y cord so I'm going to put that down through into the fuselage along with that wire there. And then this is labeled a flap and I have my own Y cord for the flaps. It's going to be an additional uh, Y cord for that and so we've got that right here uh, labeled for the flaps and so again I'm going to make sure that I have the um, the wires match. These wires are changing colors from the the brown and red and yellow to the red, black, and white. And so the the yellowy and the white are the same, the single wire. So I'm gonna get those plugged in there nice and tight. All right. Gear is plugged in, ready to go. And and then this Y cord that came with the kit that has the open wires at the end of it, that's for the aileron. Those colors match, and so I'll get those attached. And then drop that lead through the hole into the cockpit. Now, the second part then is going to be the same, except we're just going to attach this wing. And again, we'll bring the spar up through. The, the, the hole for it here. I'll go just a little ways in. Get these wires out of the way and then collect the wires from inside this wing and position them in the channel. And again we've got them labeled. So this is the gear. So we'll find the Y cord for the gear. There it is. match the wire colors so that's ready to go back down into the channel the light wire which I'm not going to connect can go down into the channel the light wire from the other wing likewise okay. now this is my aileron so the aileron goes with this double pin one. Again, I've got the wire colors matched, plus them together. So I can push that down into the cockpit. And then last but not least is this other flap. And the flap Y cord is right here. Get that in there and drop that into the channel as well. Just a little pull from the underside to help get some of these in there. And it's just going to be a matter of pushing them through. And the wing just goes together very nicely just just like that. Now before I put the bolts on here, I'm going to go inside and bring those wires up to kind of uh, untangle the mess that we made as we push through that. So let me take a minute and do that. Well, I've taken a moment to uh, straighten out the wires on the inside, and now it's just a matter of dropping the four remaining screws 
into their slots here um, on the bottom of the wing. So there are plastic fittings on the wing and a, and a plastic uh, mount in the fuselage so the screws will go just right right into those. So let's take a few moments and get those in there. Getting the alignment on those was uh, not as smooth as I would have liked, but they did align and they've come together with a really nice finish. So uh, we pretty much got the superstructure all together at this point. And so now it's going to be a matter of mounting the um, prop adapter on the motor and wiring up the radio. I hope you found that helpful. In part three, we'll finish up the assembly.